Hello, hi, a very, very happy good evening. So this is Krishnaveni and we've been talking about the story of life on earth and that's biology. So thank you so much for joining my session. So Antonia, be hi, a very, very happy good evening. So thank you for joining my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. So there's someone new, Shivraj, hi. So thank you for joining my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. Okay, so today we are in lecture four talking about morphology of flowering plants. So this is syllabus wrap up series. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so 6.30 to 7.30, we are having syllabus wrap up series for class 11 yes yes i'm here you can see see me okay hi pubg gamer a very very happy good evening so thank you for joining my session so please do like share and subscribe yes a very very happy good evening all right so morphology of flowering plants so this is a pretty huge chapter so where you have to remember a lot of examples and in the previous two lectures we were trying to make the lectures pretty interesting so connecting the examples with a lot of beautiful things so that you remember so i'm not revising the previous lecture because it takes a lot of time so anyway this is as such a division so i will go to today's course concept so today we are going to talk about the other half that is the fruit seed etc so then we will talk about the families but i don't know if you can finish the families today if not in the next lecture i'll finish the families and together we will discuss the important questions in one lecture okay so before we go about so tomorrow at 4 pm we are talking about mineral nutrition we are going to talk about the minerals essential minerals the remaining essential minerals also toxicity and also about soil as a reservoir so if time permits we'll also talk about metabolism of nitrogen okay yes so moving forward so morphology of flowering plants so this is lecture four we have been talking about yes so before this we spoke about the vegetative part of your plant so talking about the root stem leaf so we spoke about their modification we spoke about their function we also spoke about terms like infla okay we also spoke about terms like venation phyllotaxy types of leaves etc yes so whatever examples that i have discussed so far i have been giving tricks to remember so if you haven't seen those sessions so please do uh, watch my previous lecture so you, in the previous lecture i would have connected the examples with beautiful tricks so i guess you were not there for the lecture so please do watch the previous lecture okay so we were talking about terms like venation that is the arrangement of your veins and veinlets on the leaf so we have two type reticulate and parallel so then we spoke about phyllotaxy that is arrangement of leaf on your stem so which was of three types alternate opposite then you had your uh, world okay so all these were there so then we went on to talk about the flower so flower was the reproductive part of the plant so we spoke about inflorescence so there in the previous lecture we were talking about the type of inflorescence okay so the type of inflorescence was a huge thing so i have discussed all the types of inflorescence so then we spoke about the symmetry of the flower so certain terms like bisexual flower unisexual flower so all these we were talking about yes hi antony abhi so today we'll talk about andresium gynesium okay so this is what which, which language is this so i guess this is uh german is this german so definitely it is not French, but what language is this? Okay, whatever language, yes, welcome to my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. So now we'll talk about andresium. So andresium, as you know, this is the male reproductive part. So andresium is composed of stamen. So stamens is composed of two parts. So what are the two parts of your stamen? So stamens are made up of filaments and anther. Yes, so these are the two parts. Yes, sir. Very, very happy. Good evening. So, thank you so much for joining my session. Okay, so this is Spanish. So, how do I pronounce this? Buenas tardes, Holy show, Keshavan, Mocho, Gusto. All right. Yes, a very, very happy. Good evening. Okay, so each semen represents the male reproductive organ. So, andresium represents the male reproductive system. So, that is represented by stamen. Okay, you started to learn languages. Okay, so that's really nice. So you have a affinity towards learning languages. So that is called as linguistics. So that is also a good approach. Yes, Disha, a very, very happy good evening. So thank you so much for joining my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. I hope we do not have any network issues today. Okay. So anther, filament and stalk, you can say. So this is your filament. So then you have your anther. 
So this is the structure of your statement. Hi Kathy. Yes, hello. So thank you so much for joining my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. So anther is bilobed and each chamber has pollen sacs which produces pollen grain. So all these details we have read in our sexual reproduction and fl flowering plants. So this is just a recap here. Hi Shiny, yes hello, so thank you so much, I guess you are new to my session, so please do like, share and subscribe. So we are talking about morphology of flowering plants, so sterile stamen, so when a stamen cannot produce pollen grains, it is known as sterile stamen and it is known as staminode, okay. So when the stamen is not able to produce pro pollen grains, that is gamete, so it is known as a staminode, okay. So yes, so this is your andresium. So you have your filament, you have your anther. Okay. Yes. So this is how the structure is. Okay. You joined CP classes. Okay. So I teach only for English medium. I do not teach for Hindi medium. So it depends on which course you have joined. Okay, I teach only pure English medium batches, so I do not go for mixed language. So if you have joined mixed language, then you will have other faculties, not me, because I teach in pure English. Okay, but it's okay. So we can get connected, we can stay connected. Okay, so stamen, so when attached to the petals, it is known as epipetals. So example is brinjal. So you have your petals, right? So if this is your petals and if your stamens are attached to the petals like this, so this is known as epipetalous condition. So example is your brinjal. So stamens when attached to perianth. So what is perianth condition? When your calyx and your corolla are not distinct from each other. When they are fused together, so that is perianth. So perianth condition can be seen in lily. When your calyx and your corolla are fused together, so that is perianth condition. So when your stamens are attached to the perianth, instead of of the petals so it is known as your epiphyllus condition so epipetalus is when it is attached to the petal so epiphyllus is when it is attached to the perianth so example is lily okay yes so you have attended my class before all right okay so thank you shiny okay shiny ravi okay so satyendar hi hello yes thank you so much for joining my session so please do like share and subscribe yes Thank you. That's okay. Okay. Fine. So this is your epipetalus condition. So epipetalus, when your stamens are fused to your petals, it is epipetalus. So ep uh, uh, epiphyllus is when it is attached to your perianth. Okay. Yes. So moving forward. <coughs> Sorry. So stamens in a flower may remain free. So they can be more than one stamen. So if you have seen the hibiscus flower, so you have more stamens, right? So all the stamens are independent. They are not attached to each other. So you can take out one stamen separately independent of the other stamens, right? So when stamens remain free, so that condition is known as polyandrous condition. They are not fused together. So they are free from each other. So that condition is known as polyandrous condition, okay? So the stamens remain united. So when they remain united, they can be three possibilities. So the first possibility is mon adulfus. So when the stamens remain attached, they can remain attached in one bundle. Okay. Say for example, you have like this. So they can remain attached in one bundle like this. So this is known as mono adulfus. So, mono is one. So, they remain attached in a single bundle. So, example is China rose that is hibiscus. Okay. So, next two bundles. Okay. So, this is di adulfa. So, di is two. Example is P. Fine. So, then more than two bundles, it is known as poly adulfus. So, example is your citrus. So, how do you remember? So, mon adulfus, it is your hibiscus, okay? So, or your china rose. So, when petals are attached, it is gamopetalus. Yes, you are right, okay? But when stamens are attached to the petals, it is known as epipetalus condition. Okay, Antony Abhi? Fine. So, one bunch, mon adulfus, example is your china rose. So, poly adulfus, citrus. So, both of these examples start with C. So, first is china rose. The last one is citrus. So, this is mon adulfus. This is poly adulfus. So, in between di adulfus is P. So, remember P is a dicot plant. Yes, P is a dicot, right? It is a leguminous plant. So, D and D, di adulfus and dicot. So, remember dicot P here. 
Okay, so this is the example of diadolphous plant. Done? So this is how it is monadolphous. You have single sing a sing in a in one bunch when it is attached, it is monadolphous. In two bundles, it is diadolphous. Then you have polyadolphous condition. So now talking about gynecium. So female reproductive part of the flower. So this is your gynecium. Okay. So made up of one or more carpels. So you you can have more than one carpel. So a carpel consists of your stigma style and ovary so just like in your andrisium you can have more than one stamen here in gynesium you can have more than one carpel okay so carpels include your style stigma and your ovary so ovary is the enlarged basal part so it is like this right so it is your enlarged basal part so style is a tube on the ovary so this connects the stigma to the ovary so this is your stigma so this is your ovary, yes, and this is your style, done. So stigma is the tip of the style and it is receptive surface for your pollen grains. So this is how it is, okay, so this is your gynecium. So every ovary bears one or more ovules. So this basal portion is your ovary. So inside the ovary, you can have more than one or more, you can have more than one ovule and the ovules are attached to a cushion that is known as placenta. Fine. So more than one carpel, if it's present, if you have more than one carpel and when the carpels are free from each other, when they are not attached, so this condition is known as apocarpus. They are free from each other. So example is your lotus and your rose. Okay. So remember right and left. So they are not attached. They are on two different sides. So right and left is not attached. Right. So this is apocarpus condition. Okay, so next when carpels are fused to each other, it is known as syn carpus. So sync, so you have to sync your data in your computer, in your phone, right? So sync is when it is fused together. So remember mustard and tomato, okay? So remember empty, okay? When it is empty, so you are trying to fuse it, okay? So this is your condition. So once again, so what are the terms that you should remember? So first thing, when your uh, stamens are free from each other, when your stamens are not united, so this condition is known as polyandrous condition. Okay, yes. Yes, okay. So when the stamens are free, it is polyandrous condition. When the stamens are united, you have monadolphus, diadolphus, and then polyadolphus, you say. So this is when they are united. Okay. So when the petals are united, so we call it as gamopetalis. Okay. When the sepals are united, we call it as gamosepalis. Fine. So, when your petals are free from each other, so we call it as polypetalis. Done. So, when your sepals are free from each other, we call it as polycephalus. Yes. Is my lecture alone enough for need? So, uh, that. Uh, Dharani, so that is how I should pronounce your name or is it Dharani? So I guess it's Dharani. Yes, hello, hi. So thank you so much for joining my session. So please do like, share and subscribe. Yes, you can listen to my lecture, but I will not say only my lecture is enough. So after my lecture, I want you to read the NCRT textbook and then you have to solve questions. Yes, of course, I also discuss some questions, but efforts from your side is also needed. Okay, yes. Okay, so when your stamens are attached to the petals, so this condition is known as epipetalous condition. Okay, so when your stamens are attached to perianth, it is known as epiphyllous condition. 
clear? So, all these ter uh, terms are clear? Yes? Okay. So, now talking about your carpels. So, when your carpels are free, so this condition is known as apocarpus. So, when they are free, so remember light and left, so it is lotus and rose. Done? So, when the carpels are united, so that condition is known as syncarpus condition. So, remember mustard and tomato. Yes? Okay, so Antonia B is giving me a compliment. So, thank you. So, all these terms are clear? Yes? So, please do not forget these terms. You should know what is polyandrous. So, polyandrous is with respect to this. Yes, you have asked me in case of petals and sepals itself, there is poly and gamma. Yes, I have written. So, when the sepals are united, it is gamma sepalus. When the sepals are united, it is gamma sepalus. When they are free, it is polypetalus, polycephalus. Then you should remember what is monodi and polyadelphus, epipetalus, epiphylus, apocarpus, syncarpus. So, all that that has been underlined in your uh, yellow color. So, this is important. So, are you clear with these terms? Yes? Okay. So, Satyendra has given a detailed answer. Okay. Done? Okay. So, here we are moving forward to the next part. Okay. So, after fertilization, your ovules become the seeds. So, where are the ovules present? So, ovules are present inside the ovary. So, your ovules become the seeds and the ovary becomes the fruit. So, I guess I have a picture. Yes. So, the outer part is the ovary. So, ovary becomes the fruit and whatever is in the ovules that is inside the ovary, that becomes your seed. Done? So, now we are coming to the next part that is placentation. So, in the previous class, we also spoke about estivation and the position of your ovum, uh, ovary, right? So, inferior ovary, superior ovary and half inferior. Yes, I hope you remember. So, if it was hypogynous, epigynous and perigynous, right? So, then we spoke about estivation that is the arrangement of petals or sepals with respect to the other floral walls. So, that was your estivation, right? So, now talking about placentation. So, this is the arrangement of ovules within the ovary. Okay. So, you have six types here. So, one is marginal. Then you have axial. So, then you have parietal. So, basal, central and then you have free central. Yes, I, hypo, epi and peri. So, remember the examples that I told you. So, hypogynous, the ovary is on top. So, what are the examples I told you? Epigynous and perigynous. Yes, you remember? Hypogynous is when the ovary is superior. So, what are the examples I told you? Yes, you remember? Epigynous. So, I told you E, C and G. So, perigynous, P, P, R. For hypogynous, what was the example? You had your china rose, right? Yes, it starts with H that is hibiscus. And then you have mustard and then you have your sunflower plant. Yes, peri is PPR, that is plum, peach and rose. Epigynous is ECG. So, it is your cucumber, it is your goa. Okay, so hypogynous, what is the example we were discussing? Okay, so these are the six types of placentation. So, placentation talks about the arrangement of ovules within the ovary. So, we have six types of placentation. So, first is marginal. So, just like the name suggests, so here the ovules are towards the margin. So, axial, so this is towards the axis. Fine? Yes? So, then parietal, so this is towards the periphery. So, basal, it is towards the bottom portion. So, central, it is in the middle. So, just like the name suggests, so that is what it means. So, don't get confused. So, here we will talk about it. So, marginal, it is along the margin, right? So, axial, it is along the center of the axis, right? Then free central, so here it is freely suspended in the center. It does not have anything here. Yes, so we, I told you to remember it has, you have a hibiscus in the middle. So mustard and sunflower, you have two yellow rows and one red flower in the between. Yes, so this is axial. So this is free central. So parietal is towards the periphery and then basal is towards the bottom. 
Okay, so here we will discuss about each of them. The first one is marginal. So the placenta forms a ridge along the ventral suture of the ovary. So the ovules are born on two ridges, that is two rows. So have you seen the pea plant? So it is like this. So your ovules are born on the ridges. So it is present in this is one row, this is another row. So here it is along two rows, right? So this is the ventral suture. So this is your margin. So if this is your margin, it is along the margin, right? So what is the suture? The line of fusion where the margin of the megasporophyll join to form characteristic tubular shape of the ovary. So this is the suture. Okay, so here in two rows you have uh, your ovules attached. So this is marginal type of placentation. So then you have your axial type. So placenta is axial. So ovules are attached together in multilocular fashion. So what is this locule? So the cavity of the ovary is known as your locule. So you have your uh, ovary. Yes, so this is your ovary. So, sorry, this is your ovary. So, inside your ovary, you have your ovules. And the space inside the ovary is known as your locule. Fine. So, example is your china rose, tomato and your lemon. So, this is your axial. So, I have a picture for axial. So, if you can see axial presentation. So, along the axis, so this is your locule. So, this space inside the ovary is your locule. Right? So, here you have septa, you have walls dividing it. So, along the main axis, you have your ovules attached. So, this is axile presentation. So, example is your china rose, tomato and your lemon. So, parietal is towards the margin. Can you see it's towards the margin? So, ovules develop on the inner wall of the ovary. So, this is the outer wall. And this is the inner wall. So it develops on the inner wall of the ovary. So here the ovary is one chambered, but sometimes it can become two chambered due to false septum or pseudo septum. So example is mustard and arigmon. Fine. So three we are done. Marginal, axial and parietal. So now the next one is your free central. So the ovules are in the central axis and there is no septa here. It is freely hanging in the uh, center. So dianthus and primrose is an example of free central. So basal, so the placenta develops at the base of the ovary and here a single ovule is attached to it. So sunflower and marigold. So if you look, so this is free central. So there is no uh, septa here. There is no wall like this so that is not there so there is no septa here so then this is okay so this is your basal so at the base you have this so only in basal you have only a single ovule only in basal you have a single ovule and the example is your sunflower and marigold so please remember this so this has been a repeated previous year question so basal has a single ovule attached to it and examples are sunflower and your marigold okay Yes, done? Fine. So now talking about the fruit. So we are done with the placentation. We are done with the flower. So we are done with the root, stem, leaf and flower. So now after the flower, okay. So after the fertilization happens, so we have the formation of fruit and seed, right. So now we will talk about the fruit. So Advait, Yes, hi, thank you so much for joining my session. So, am I a Malayali? No, I am not a Malayali. Okay. So, characteristic feature of the flowering plant is the fruit because the flowers are born so that fruits can be produced. So, the fruit is mature ripened ovary. So, this is developed after fertilization. Fine, the fruit formed without fertilization of the ovary is parthenocarpic or false fruit. So, here you have a lot of terms which we have already discussed. What is fa false fruit? What is parthenocarpic, etc. Right? Yes, there are three types. Yes, okay. Fine. Okay, so fruit formed without fertilization is your parthenocarpic and it is false fruit. So example is apple and strawberry. So here there is no direct fusion of the male and female gamete. So this is parthenocarpic apple and strawberry. Okay, fine. So this you basically call it as false fruit because there is no fertilization. Yes, simple composite mix. Yes, we will talk about them. 
okay so this this is your false fruit so now talking the fruit consists of a wall okay yes 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 you can do especially for animal kingdom especially for morphology you can do so these are the two chapters where you have a lot of examples yes please and also for structural organization in animals where we are talking about the types of tissues so that is also important so these three are the uh, most important chapters where examples no nothing is a waste of time anything that you study will never be a waste at one point in time it will be useful for you so no studying is never a waste of time even if you study anything Else, it is never a waste of time so studying is the most enriched habit so it is not a waste of time yes you can put an example note for these three chapters animal kingdom so plant kingdom to some extent so then you can also have biological classification if you are not strong in that chapter then please go ahead with your um, morphology of flowering plants yes and then structural organization in animals so these are the chapters where the only examples can be the question okay Yes, so fruit consists of a wall. The wall is known as pericarp, and the fruit consists of seeds. So the pericarp, when it is thick and fleshy, fleshy, it is differentiated into outer peric epicarp and middle mesocarp and inner endocarp. So when the wall is very thick, so it is differentiated into three layers: outer epicarp. Okay, so middle mesocarp and inner endocarp. So it is divided into three regions like this. Fine. So the pericarp, when it is dry and fleshy, so when it is thick and fleshy, it is differentiated into three regions. So when it is differentiated into two, uh, when it is dry and fleshy, it is never differentiated like this. Okay. So mango and coconut, this fruit is known as a droop fruit. So it is a type of fruit where you have a, a class of fruits classified under this. So you call uh, these as biology students, these as common students based on some category. So similarly, you have what is called as droop fruit. Why? Because they are single seeded mango and your coconut. This fruit is called as a droop. So they develop from monocarpillary superior ovary plus they are one seeded so monocarpillary so mono is one so they have a single carpel and the ovary is superior so it is a hypogynous condition okay and it is single seeded so mango the pericarp is thick and fleshy so it is differentiated into epicarp which is thin then you have a middle mesocarp that is what you eat that is the edible one and then the hard endocarp that is your seed okay yes so moving forward, so coconut is also a droop fruit. So the mesocarp is the fibrous thing that you have. The brownish fibrous thing that you have, so that is your mesocarp. Fine. So this is the epicarp, so this is the mesocarp and this is the central cavity. So this outer portion is your endocarp in case of your mango. Right? Yes? Okay, so talking about the types of fruits, so this is what Satyendra was saying. So we have three types of fruits. So what are the three types of fruits? Simple, aggregate and composite. So the simple fruit develops from monocarpillary ovary or multicarpillary syncarpus ovary. Yes, you're right, but uh, you do not have to go into a lot of examples like this. So you can cut short as much as possible. You do not have to expand it. So the more you remember, then the things get more complicated. So you do not have to. Okay. So simple fruit develops from monocarpally. So a single or carpal or multicarpillary syncarpus ovary. So syncarpus means, so here you are having more than one carpal and everything is fused together. Okay. Yes, so only one fruit is formed in case of your simple fruit. So simple fruit can be of two types. One is fleshy fruit, the other one is dry fruit. So simple, so you have three types of fruit. So one is simple fruit, the other one is aggregate, the other one is composite. Okay, yes, so your simple fruit is developing from monocarpally or multicarpillary condition and it can be of two types, so fleshy fruit as well as dry fruit, okay? So fleshy fruit is coconut, mango, banana, tomato, so everything is fleshy, right? So if you put it in your bag, it will become shake. So this is this, so coconut inside it is fleshy, not on the outer side. 
fine so dry fruits is your cashew nut your cotton your sunflower so this is your simple fruit now talking about your aggregate fruit so aggregate fruit develops from multicarpullary apocarpus condition so apocarpus means when they are free they they do not remain attached but they are free so that is apocarpus condition so apocarpus ovary so each carpel is separated from one other and it forms a fruitlet so you have more than one carpel yes and they are separate from each other so that is why it is apocarpus so they are separated from each other and each one forms a fruitlet so that is your apocarpus condition example is your strawberry you have small small fruits like this right so each one forms a separate fruitlet like this so the last type is your composite fruit so the false fruit they are so many ovaries and other parts combine together to form a fruit so in a true fruit only your ovary and the male gamete fuses to form a fruit so now here other parts your new cell is your sepals petals so everything combined to form a fruit so this is your composite fruit so the whole inflorescence is modified into fruit so example is your jackfruit so if you see a jackfruit so everything so all the parts of the flower are modified to form your fruit so this is your uh, composite fruit so it is enough if you remember this much you do not have to go much in detail so talking about the types of composite fruit the types of aggregate fruit or the simple fruit so remember this much okay yes strawberry and this is your jackfruit so moving forward okay so this is uh, uh discussed so seed so ovules after fertilization become your seeds right okay so moving forward so the seed consists of your seed coat and your embryo so so we were talking about the uh, ovary so ovary develops into fruit so we spoke about the three types of fruit it can form you know all about yes it is good if you know but uh, if you do not know and if you are scared of remembering examples it is not necessary for neat okay so ovules after fertilization develop into seeds the seeds consist of your seed coat and your embryo so the embryo consist of your radicle so which develops into root and it consist of an embryonal axis and cotyledons done so monocotyledons example is your wheat and maize so dicotyledons is your gram and pea so now talking about the structure of a dicot seed so the outermost covering of the seed is known as seed coat okay so the seed coat has two layers the outer layer is testa and inner layer is stigma so this is in case of your dicot seed your monocot seed does not have these two layers so please don't get confused so your seed coat has an outer testa and your inner stigma so these are the two layers fine so hilum is the scar on the seed coat okay so the developing seeds are attached to the fruit so your seed is there and your seed attaches to the developing fruit so this scar is your hilum so hilum is the scar on the seed coat so above the hilum is your micropyle opening so now you know what is your micropyle right so micropyle consists of your egg apparatus through which the male gamete moves in so above your hilum so hilum is a scar on the seed coat because that is where your seed attaches to the fruit so in mango the portion of the mango that attaches with your fruit so that is your hilum so there is a particular scar on it so there you above that you have a small opening so that is your micropyle so micropyle opening so allows the exchange of gases okay so within the seed you have your embryo embryonal axis and two cotyledon because this is a dicot seed fine so cotyledons are fleshy and full of reserve food materials so basically they nourish the growing embryo so cotyledon consists of pumule and radicle so pumule grows into your shoot and radicle into your root so castor has endosperms so that is a result of double fertilization so by now we have read enough about your endosperm so castor consists of endosperm so this is a result of double fertilization because in angiospermic plant so castor is formed by triple fusion okay so full storing tissue is your endospermic tissue so i hope you understood so mostly this is talking about your dicot so mostly your dicots are non endospermous 
okay so your bean gram p because they consume the embryo well before it there is no persisting embryo after the development so only in case of castor it develops so in case of your grams it does not develop so this is the structure of your dicot seed so this scar is your hilum so above the scar you have your micropyle opening you have your seed coat so the outer layer is your testa and inner layer is your tegmen okay yes castor is the exception in your dicot so now talking about monocot it is mostly endospermic except one that is orchids which are non endospermic fine so then cereals like your maize they have seed coat which is membranous they are generally fused with the fruit wall done so endosperm is bulky and it stores food so basically endosperm and cotyledons have the same function so endosperm has an outer covering that separates the embryo so it is like this so let me show you the figure so here you have your endosperm okay so here you have your embryo right so here you have your seed coat so this outer layer is your seed coat and this inner portion is your endosperm so between your seed coat and your endosperm you have a layer that is known as aileron layer so this is a proteinaceous layer so mostly they ask this question so aileron layer is the uh, what is the ploidy of your aileron layer so aileron layer ploidy is haploid sorry it is diploid it is 2n okay then you have a star sheet surrounding your embryo so this is known as scutellum fine okay so now you have your pumule and you have your radical so pumule develops into shoot and radical develops into root right so the shoot has another layer covering it that is the pumule has another layer covering it that is known as cleoptile okay so then you have radical so radical has another layer covering so that is your cleorhizum so radical and pumule is diploid so radical and pumule develop from the growing embryo so in a embryo it is a axis so what will be the ploidy of that it will be haploid it is not diploid okay aileron is not a uh, triploid endosperm is triploid so this is haploid okay yes fine so uh, till this did you understand so any more doubts okay so this question that you asked me if aileron layer is triploid okay so generally this is a proteinaceous layer which is haploid but sometimes the aileron layer so fuses with the endosperm so that the ploidy of aileron layer is also considered triploid okay antony abi yes aileron is triploid not haploid because sometimes it fuses with the endosperm but radical and pumule they are haploid but they give rise to your root and your shoot done yes so shall we move forward okay so now talking about the semi technical description of a typical flowering plant so this semi technical description so this description has to be brief okay it has to be simple it should not be very lengthy because no one will like to read if you have so many pages written right so you have to write to the point and pretty short and it has to be in the scientific language it has to be presented in proper sequence done so the plant is described about the habit okay so it's not uh, the where it lives how uh, which condition it lives and then the vegetative characters you talk about whether it has tap root adventitious root so stem whether it has stem modification so whether it has alternate leaf opposite leaf so that you talk about then the floral characters inflorescence whether it has racemose inflorescence or zymose inflorescence so all that matters and then the flower parts whether it is a complete flower or it is an incomplete flower and then the floral diagram which represents all of these in just a single formula right 
So in the uh, so this is your floral uh, diagram, floral diagram, and then you have your floral formula. So we'll talk about what are these. So the floral formula is represented by some symbols. So these are the symbols. So bract. So bract is the leaf like that is present at the base of your flower. So that is your bract. Okay. So if you have a bract in your flower, you call it as bractiate. If you do not have, it is called as ebractiate. Okay, so then K stands for calyx and C stands for corolla. So both starts, so it's calyx and corolla. So one you represent as C and the other you represent as K. So then perianth condition, when your calyx and corolla are fused to each other, so you represent it as P. So andrisium is represented as A, gynesium as G. So then if your ovary is superior, that is if it's a hypogynous condition, you write like this. So G is on top, you're pushing G. That is why you are writing like this. If your G is inferior, you write like this. You are pushing the G down. Okay. And this symbol represents your male and this represents your female. So, if I write like this, it is a bisexual flower. Yes. And you have types of symmetry. So, this is your actinomorphic symmetry and this is your zygomorphic. Because in actinomorphic, you have more than one plane of division. In zygomorphic, it is only equal right and left halves. So, this is how you represent it. Done? Yes. So, here I have a floral formula. So, here it says like this. So, this is the symbol of symmetry. So, this is actinomorphic symmetry. Right, so it has more than two planes of division, and this means it is a bisexual flower. So K stands for your calyx. So in the bracket, it is written five. So five means you have five sepals. So calyx are sepals, right? So you have five sepals, and if it is in bracket, it means it is fused. So it is gamosepalous condition. So if you write it in bracket, it is gamosepalous. Then C stands for your corolla. So here you have five petals and these five petals are also fused because it is inside bracket. So this is your gamopetalous condition. So A stands for your andresium. So you have five stamens here but it is not fused. There is no bracket. So it is polyandrous condition okay but your uh, petals and your andresium are connected which means it is an epipetalous condition so your stamens are attached to the petals so this is your epipetalous condition so here g is underlined so g is superior so ovary is superior that is gynesium is superior so you have two carpels so it is um, uh, more than one and it is also fused, so it is syncarpus condition. So this is how you decode the floral formula. So is this clear? So did you understand how do you find out this? How this has been decoded? Yes, any more doubts in how to decode this? Is this much clear to everyone? So any doubts? Okay, so everyone understood how to decode the formula, floral formula? Okay, so moving forward to floral diagram. So this provides info about the number of parts of the flower, their arrangement and relationship they have with one another. So in your floral formula, you cannot give uh, instructions. Uh, so in floral formula, you had everything written in a line. So in a floral diagram, you have everything represented by a figure. So that is your floral diagram. So the position of the mother axis, so what is the axis of the flower? The main axis of the flower is known as peduncle, right? So that is represented by dot on the floral diagram. So calyx, corolla, andresium, the gynesium are drawn in successive words. Your gynesium is the innermost and your calyx is the outermost. Fine? So it shows the cohesion and adhesion between the parts of the words and between the words. So this is the mother axis. So this is the main axis. Okay? So this is represented by a dot. Then you have your sepals or your calyx. So the outermost whorl is your calyx and the innermost is your gynesium. So then you have your sepals or calyx. So you come inside, you talk about the petals. 
So, inner to that you have your antrecium, then you have your gynecium. So, looking at the diagram, you can write the floral formula. So, it is written like this. So, this is E bracket. If there is a bract at the end, you draw like this. If it has bract, you draw like this. If there are no bract, so you do not draw anything. So, this is E bracted condition. So, this is actinomorphically symmetrical. You can divide it like this. You can divide it like this. You can divide it like this. So, more than one plane of division. So, it is bisexual. It has both andresium and gynesium. So, it has five calyx. So, the calyx are joined to each other. Then, uh, uh, petals. So, you have five petals. Once again, they are joined. So, andresium is five, but they are single. They are not attached to each other, but they are attached to the petals. So, it is epipetalous condition. Your gynesium is on top. So, the ovary is superior and it has two carpels. So, it is more than one. So, we call it as multicarpillary and once again it is fused. So, it is syncarpus condition. So, from the floral diagram also you can deduce the floral formula or vice versa. So, this is just easy representation. Okay, so sometimes if you do not understand the theory, if you look at the diagram, it makes the things much simpler, right? So, in newspaper, before you read the headline, we have this tendency to look into the picture and then we go to the headline, right? So, similarly, because sometimes pictures, our mind can easily decode. So, that is the reason. Done? So, this chapter we will continue. We will talk about the floral families in the next class and we will also discuss the important questions. So, please do join because the last lecture is most important. We will be discussing important questions from this chapter. Okay? So, thank you so much for being a wonderful audience. So, if you genuinely like the way I teach, so please do like, share and subscribe. And please do stay tuned. So, tomorrow at 4 p.m. we are talking about mineral nutrition. So, that is lecture 3. So, please stay safe. So, stay strong, stay healthy. And thank you so much for joining me at this late hour in the evening. So, this is me signing off. So, have a great night uh, ahead. So, bye-bye and take care.